Alan Walls Photography. I'm Alan. I have something a little bit different for you today. This is a video about studios for ordinary people like us. So here's the deal. I have kind of tried to become a creator of sorts. I started out writing a blog a long time ago nobody reads it but uh, not to worry and then I, I started a podcast a year ago because uh, I thought that would be fun uh, but nobody listens to that either so I thought video there <laughs> there's the answer do videos so I don't really know anything about video everything I've, I've learned I've learned from either YouTube videos or reading books uh, but nonetheless, I spend most of my time doing this and I try to put out good content and all that. But I don't have unlimited space and I definitely don't have unlimited funds. I have hardly any limited funds, come to think of it. But I was watching a video the other day of a very, uh, a very famous photographer, videographer, was showing us around the studio and... Boy, it was really impressive, but it didn't have a whole lot of relevance for me because I don't have any red cameras or uh, you know 20 foot ceilings and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But I did think, you know, maybe um, uh, maybe ordinary people out there who are struggling to set up a, an audio feed or a, a, a video channel on YouTube might be interested in what I've done because I built my work studio out of stuff that was sitting on the shelf mostly. I've had to buy a few things as time has gone by, but most of it has just been pieced together. Um, I uh, have used, used a camera that was just sitting on the shelf gathering dust and all that. And I'll walk you through it, and I thought it might be helpful. Uh, I've managed to cram it all in a tiny space because a tiny space is all I have. This room's nine by ten feet, so it's small and it's got a lot of stuff in it. So I just thought I'd show you. Maybe it'll be useful. Maybe it won't. Uh, obviously, if if um, if you've got a red camera, you probably don't need to watch any more of this. This is uh, this is really for people who are on a shoestring budget but are. Uh, really interested in, in trying to get the best quality they can. Disclaimer, I'm not a videographer. I don't know anything about it other than what I've learned from reading books and um, looking at YouTube videos. It's a lot of trial and error. It's much harder than I thought it was. But uh, nevertheless, you've got to start somewhere. This is where I started and I thought it might be interesting. So let's take a quick tour of the facilities. It won't take long. So here we go. This is where it all starts. This is an old MacBook Pro. I've had it for years and years and years. It's been good. It's just getting worn out. This is uh, one of those Intuos uh, Wacom tablets that I use to edit. Very nice. Really like that handy piece of gear. I didn't buy it. It was a Christmas present from my daughter. Good for her. Uh, Camera, of course, you'd expect to see that. Old pair of uh, Sony Studio headphones that I've had for years and years, and they were just gathering dust. Um, 
This I had to buy. This is an Audient uh, USB interface for my XLR microphones. I didn't actually plan on buying this, but when I bought my microphones, I accidentally bought XLR ones, you know, the ones with those plugs. So I had to find a way to make them work with my computer, hence the Audient ID4. These are loudspeakers that I got in a music shop that was going out of business, and they were, I think, $150 was their list price. I got two of them, obviously, and uh, they were on sale for $50, so that was nice and cheap. Going around in a circle here, my, uh, my microphone here is the one that I use for my podcast because it's got a really good sound, but uh, it's a Rode uh, Procaster. But to use it, the microphone has to be like halfway down your throat when you're talking. So it's terrible for, for video. I haven't really been able to use it at all for any of my video stuff, even though I prefer the sound of this. It's expensive too. I mean, the microphone's not. It was only like $200 for the microphone. But you have to buy this woolly thing that was just ridiculously overpriced, like $20. It's just a piece of foam. The microphone looks nice without it, but my peas get a little bit poppy. Anyway, $20 worth of pl plastic there. And then this mounty thing, uh, cost another forty dollars i think it was and the stand to put it on is actually the road stand that uh, that they make and and i really like it but um i didn't get that cheap either so this whole thing i ended up having to pay regular prices for uh just uh, keep my card readers and hard drives stacked up there uh let me see what else have we got around here I almost pointed uh, the camera at my light. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I bought these things when they first came out, the, the Rode Wireless Goes, and I've already made a video on these. I'm not super crazy about them. Um, I'm not sure the audio qualities are that good. It might just be me, uh, but um, yeah, I'll, the jury's still out on that. This, on the other hand, I absolutely love. This is the Zoom H5 uh, that I use a lot uh, when I'm recording out in the, in the field. or uh, I even use it when I'm recording in the studio because I think it, it, the, the quality of the sound is so much better than I get, even from my D850. Uh, so, yeah, this is, this is always hanging around somewhere. That thing it's standing on, by the way, is the foot of a monopod uh, that um, I don't like using the foot on the monopod, but it made an excellent uh, stand for my, uh, for my audio thing. As soon as I've got to walk past this anyway, this is where I keep all my stands and tripods and, and monopods and snake hunting equipment and everything just hang in there. All my photography uh, bits and bobs are stacked on this one wire shelf gimbals and bellows and a lot of macro stuff and then all the camera bits and pieces that you accumulate are all in there some of my lenses the ones i'm using are there and then uh, my other lenses i keep uh, in these bigger boxes here because they're airtight what else just more macro junky stuff all in boxes anyhow uh, my studio lighting uh, is all down here and uh, above that that is my uh, printing area there we go uh, yeah i use this this canon pro 10 uh just love it it's a fantastic printer and um like any frugal chap, I uh, fill my cartridges myself. I wouldn't do this unless you do that. It's just too expensive otherwise. Let me see. Is some of my continuous lighting stuff up here. 
So I'm not very good with this gimbal. This is that $100 gimbal I did the video about. It's rubbish, but uh, there you go. It's $100. And that's uh, where I keep soft boxes and, and other studio lighting stuff all stacked up on top of that shelf. These are pieces of uh, um, card and... Um, what's the name of that stuff acrylic and glass all stuff that i use in product uh, work and i've got stacks of this somewhere else in the house too uh, i rebuild tripods that i buy at, at thrift shops uh, just for the fun of it and uh, that's the most recent one some crap uh, some dodgy old um, video uh, tripod like i think it's one of those best buy ones but it was in terrible shape and i rebuilt it and it actually works now i might start using it so the other thing that we walk right past i do need to show you is is this doodad this light uh is my latest acquisition it i'm not going to point the camera at the lighty part of it because it's really bright uh but it's from that cheap company called uh niwa is it niwa yeah uh but it's fully adjustable uh it has a dial for white and a dial for yellow so you can pretty much set the color temperature that you want and i i really like it it was not expensive but it's light and it's portable and it came with the barn doors on it and everything so i thought it was a good deal i have uh several C stands and uh, I brought two of them in here to hold this equipment. So the, the most interesting part of all of this, if I can get under here without lobotomizing myself on that stand, is the business end here, the, the camera setup and everything. Well, it's, it all starts down here with um, a tripod. Let's see if I can get you a slightly better picture of that. It's an old tripod. I think it was made by Vanguard. But uh, a friend of mine, a pro uh, photographer, had this and he was getting ready to give it away because it's very old and he bought something nicer. And I bought it from him and, and refurbished it, took it all apart, put it back together, and it is awesome. It's aluminum and heavy, uh, but it's great for what I'm using it for. The thing attached on top of it is this crossbar thing that I got on sale at my local camera shop. I think I paid $50 for it, and it's a Smith Victor something or other arm, uh, but it's fantastic. It's solid as a rock, and it holds uh, all of my gear all in one place, so it's very compact. Um, attached to one of the plates is a Benro uh, three-way gear head. I had a Manfrotto one and dropped it and broke it and they yeah, they weren't very helpful at the Manfrotto place. So I, I tried this Benro and I love it. It's fantastic for video because I know that I know that any tweaks I made will won't move between videos. So very nice. The camera that I'm using is a Nikon D7500, which is a fairly nice intermediate APS-C camera that frankly I just don't use a lot anymore because, uh, well, I shoot almost exclusively full frame now. I'm still with Nikon um, and I, I like it very much, but this lens I've never shot with. It's the kit lens that came in the box with the camera it's uh, it's something like 18 to 140 millimeter but honestly for videos i think it's perfectly good i mean th it's not a lens i'd ever want to take off there and go take pictures with so uh, there's no no danger of that so i can just leave all of this stuff right where it is all the time and then when I get ready to make a video, I'll just turn it on. So very, very satisfied with this uh, inexpensive kit lens uh, on, on the camera. Uh, one of my most brilliant inventions uh, is that, that crazy looking mirror. 
what it is is uh, I was looking at buying one of those um, uh, what you call them camera monitors so that I could see what in the world I was doing on the camera uh, when I was doing videos like where my head was and how much of the top was getting cut off so um, I almost bought one of those monitors and they're stupid expensive but then I had this idea of just taking a couple of uh, little small rig super clamps and a little tension arm I hope you can see all of that and a three dollar mirror from a dollar store really should be called a three dollar store because it, it that's what it cost but I'll demonstrate actually I'll have to turn the camera on first let me put it on live view so if I take you back around to the business end of all of this where from where I'm sitting let's see if I can get it at eye level oh hang on so from where I'm from where I'm sitting looking straight ahead at, into the lens of the camera see I can see exactly what's going on in the mirror this is very uh oh I don't know what that was this is all very uh, science fiction-y to me, doing this, videoing me, videoing me like that. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Going back over here, um, the only other thing of interest, I think, over here, you know what, I, I could shed some more light on there, I think. I'm not sure if that even helps, but... I've got all the light pointing forward. So, yeah, there is there is uh, two other things I want to show you. This was just uh, this thing right here. Was a, It says really right stuff on it. So it, whatever it was was super expensive. But now it's just bits that I've bought a box of bits from the camera shop. And uh, I put it all together like this. And this is normally where I mount my zoom so that it's out of the way. Um, for today, I needed, I needed it somewhere uh, more accessible. And then right next to that is another piece of old junk that came out of that box. It looks like the old base plate for one of those massive cameras from 500 years ago or whatever but it had just the right screw holes in it and I bolted onto it one of those bendy arms I love bendy arms they're really useful and this one is great it looks like the Manfrotto one it's probably made in the Manfrotto factory but it's called the ProMaster I actually use ProMaster tripods and love them uh, and then bolted on the end of it is a little shock mount for an ATR something 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 R. No, that's wrong. It's an Audio Technica condenser microphone. And I honestly I can't remember the numbers, but I'll put them here on the screen so that you can uh, you can see what it is. It was a bit expensive for my tight budget. It was like a hundred and maybe a hundred and seventy dollars, but it's the best thing I ever bought because it allows me to just sit in my chair and do my tutorial videos and not have to have that down my throat while I'm doing them. So it's it's uh, not uh, uh, inexpensive. Well, it's not super expensive, but I just love the sound of it. It works really well, great quality and not too expensive. Have I forgotten anything? No, I don't think so and that's it that's that's everything um let me get back to my desk so that's it that that's the whole thing this is where i do my photo editing i do my printing in here i do my videos i do my podcast i write my blog and everything happens at this desk and uh, you know you can as you see it, it's not a super expensive setup and you could do it even cheaper than this um, but uh, yeah this is this is the way it's worked out for me 
And if you have any questions, if you're interested in, in trying to, to set up a studio yourself, and there's any way I can help you, let me know. I'll be happy to answer your questions. I may not be able to answer your questions because I don't know what I'm doing, but well, we could still chat, that would be nice. If this was in any way useful to you, give me a thumbs up, please. I've only had two of those, and I'd love to, to feel the thrill of a third. And um, obviously, uh, if you're a glutton for punishment, uh, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I put out a couple of videos a week, and uh, yeah, <laughs> if you sign up for it, you, uh, you deserve all you're going to get. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks very much for, uh, for coming along. This was fun to do, and I will see you on my next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.